it's amazing that we have come this far to this stage in terms of democracy because our country is used to revolutions and most of them bloody and and violent it, in any democracy and, and we have seen over you know, st in the Middle East um, where we usually have a president but that president is uh, in, in just by name or by um, they, they have elections and surprisingly the, the, the same president and later on the son or, or someone very closely associated keeps winning those elections by 80% of the vote. In, and if there is no transition, this is what happens to every democracy. Our biggest fear in Afghanistan was that that's going, that is probably going to happen to Afghanistan. We were not going to, we're not expecting that we will have a real political transition happen. We passed that test at a very critical time where the uh, where both uh, where the elections had become contested, and the candidates uh, both assumed or or at least. Uh, felt that they won. How do we come together, um, a country that has no precedence? For the first time, we didn't kill the other, the opposition. We <laughs> negotiated. And this was even a larger test. We didn't prepare. We thought if the transition happens and it happens smoothly, that would be the biggest challenge and that would be the biggest test that we passed. We actually passed a much greater test to ourselves, to our own surprise. Today, we're almost close to two-year anniversary of our um, our national unity government, and unity governments by by design are not very efficient. In addition to the political transition, we also went through a military transition, which meant 110,000 foreign troops who left, and all of the responsibility for com combat became the res uh, the sole responsibility of the Afghan security forces. We we. We faced the toughest year last year, um, and this was a year where the Taliban's strategic objective was to take over at least one city or, or so. They didn't meet th those strategic objectives. They never managed to, t um, to take over or maintain and, and keep any, um, uh, any of our provincial capitals. Um, and and in addition to that, uh, the economy went um, had a, a, a great fall. We lost between uh, three to four hundred thousand jobs as the international troops left because most of it was reliant on the uh, on the military, and so the the um, political transition, the um, um, the security transition, and the economic transition, all of that put together, and still the national unity government performed um, um, so well to our own surprise. Our economy went up we, by 21%. Our revenue went up by 21% last year. So um, to, to point uh, or to finish up with what I was trying to say is for a democracy to survive, transitions are important. And for, for us to have survived that test and have done it with, um, by coming together in unity um, makes us feel proud and it also is a testament to the American partnership that we have had. The training that went to our security forces and our government to have been able to, to get, uh, to make uh, this experiment uh, successful is, um, is a testament to our, our partnership and the efforts that went into Afghanistan. So all, to all of you, to all of those of you who have served in Afghanistan, even if it was for a day, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the fact that um, we would not have been able to, to do what we could, what we did today, if it wasn't for all those um, efforts. Every little counts, and, and we are thankful for every single one of that. Uh, yes? A great word for Bloomberg News. One of the questions that always comes up on the U.S. side is, will the U.S. troops there, in any place the U.S. troops are, be in here to actually be something the Taliban could use to say we're occupied, I guess 8,500 troops isn't enough to really occupy a country the size of Afghanistan, but how do you... How do you sort of message that? How do you balance that need for the continued need for U.S. presence there with the idea that you are trying to, you know, stand on your own two feet uh, at the same time? So, um, it, terrorists. First of all, let me address that first part. Have no religion. It's not. It's not that they're targeting um, the Americans. That that was an excuse for sure. Uh, they used it as an excuse to say they're they're targeting foreign troops in Afghanistan. There are no foreign troops. And at least in combat, and they're not what they used to be in convoys. But we continue to have suicide attacks around the country, killing civilians, children, innocent children, and women. 
Um, and so whatever excuses the terrorists use for, their, uh, to for continuing their violence will continue to be. They'd make new ones if they, if they could. Um, today, the Afghan security forces are in, uh, are in the, and leading the combat. So we only, the international security forces only help um, advise and assist our security forces. Um, and only recently have they had the authority extended to uh, advise us on combat if they needed to. Most of it was not. So the past year, um, over most more more than a year now, or over a year and a half, has been in lead. The Afghan combat has been in um, in the Afghans in the hands of the Afghan security forces completely. Um, for for anyone to use that as an excuse would be wrong. Can you tell us about the state of the internet Wi-Fi penetration and how the Afghan youth are benefiting that, some success stories maybe? Absolutely. Uh, well, we have about 90% um, in, well, not internet coverage, but wow. um, telephone coverage. These are cell phone coverage. We didn't, we didn't have wired connectivity, so we went straight into wireless, and then once we did, we also now extended to 3G, and that means everybody who has access to a smartphone or can access uh, wireless connectivity. Um, the numbers of internet users have dr dramatically increased, um, and, and the prices keep coming down as the, the numbers increase. Um, it's, we are amazed by how uh, how much participation the uh, this, um, the Afghan public has in even in the civil society and the political forum. Um, do re an example back to the elections would be um, we did places where there were no journalists. There were uh, the the people were you know the the real journalists. They were taking pictures and and posting. Uh, uh, progress of the the election day, and if they mm, if they saw fraud, they reported it. Um, to today, the the Afghan public, especially the civil society, and they're all using the internet, hold the government accountable. So we have uh, people report on corruption. We have people report on, on on government officials misusing their positions, and even places or areas that need more attention. So we're, we're hopeful that it will even grow further and we'll be able to channel it to become more and more productive.